can you tell us first of all what happened with this phone conversation? Um, we were just feeding her and she just she started throwing up and just stopped breathing and she started going blue and that's when she decided to make the phone call and he helped me through it and made me bring her back and yeah, I, I knew how to do CPR, I just froze and forgot what to do so we got on the phone Mark, he helped me out a lot so. So what would you like to say to me? Oh, thank you. <laughs> if it wasn't for you, she probably wouldn't be here. So. Is that right? Yeah, she's done a great job. <laughs> so it was pretty scary? Very, yeah. It was extremely scary. She went blue and yeah, she was gone for about five and a half minutes. So it was one of the scariest things ever. So. Okay. Let's do something. Okay, so they're howling you as a bit of a hero, what do you say to that? Well, I don't really think I'm a hero. I mean, I'm a trained emergency operator. I deal with life-threatening situations pretty much every day, so I've got to know what to do, be able to stay calm. So it's just good that they were able to um, follow the instructions and it all worked out for the best. So what were you able to do? Well, I was able to um, give her instructions on how to, how to support the child, how to perform rescue breaths, chest compressions, and um, once the child started breathing, how to um, ensure that she did stay conscious and kept breathing until the emergency vehicles arrived at the scene. Okay. So what was wrong with her? Just... Um, she just inhaled the vomit into her lungs and it collapsed her right lung on her. So uh, apparently baby used to steal it sometimes. So yeah, it was scary. <laughs> Thank you. And what number did you phone? Did you bring from below? Or below. Or yeah. Does it normally come through, Andrew, to to a comms operator like yourself before then um, put through to an ambulance operator? Well, in, in this case, it was directed to the yeah. police because um, she was obviously quite hysterical. The young um, foster operator didn't know what service she was actually after or what the problem was, right. so that automatically directs it to the police service. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what was she saying to you? What did she sound like when you? got the phone call, how were you able to determine what was going on? Well, initially she was um, screaming. I managed to um, to get her calm and she told me that the baby wasn't breathing. So immediately I obtained the address, all the relevant particulars, and um, started commencing the um, appropriate medical instructions for her. And in the meantime, I assume you got the ambulance and everyone else heading there? Yeah, that's correct. Other operators were receiving the details electronically and they responded to ambulances and um, police vehicles to the address. Are we going to have a chat with you, Dad? At all? You're not talking? Just a brother. Oh, brother. <laughs> brother, not Dad. Okay. Um, do you mind having a quick quick chat with us? I'm just going to move that microphone over to you. Yeah, that'll be good. Right across? Yeah. Yeah. Can we just get you to say the spelling name for us? Kane Sutton. C A I N E S U D O T O N. And what do you think about um, about this guy and how well he um, he, oh, he managed to save your niece's life, really, didn't he? Well, well I think he's a hero because I just lost my parents last year and I couldn't afford to lose any of my other siblings. So thank you so much for what you did for my sister and helped my niece. No problem at all. You're welcome. Appreciate that. And yeah. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Just yeah. And how is she now? Is she all okay? She's fine. Yeah. She's just about four checkups a month at the Royal Brisbane Hospital. Is that just standard? Is this one of those things that happen? Um, no, it's because she was so premature. Oh, she came right. 24 weeks. Oh, okay. So, yeah. so, they have to, she has to see the endocrinology team there. Yeah, sure. so, yeah. <clears throat> what would you say to parents in a similar situation? Mm -hmm. Other parents in a similar situation? Just make sure you bring your fall and do the CPR because it's a lifesaver. Yeah. yeah, without it, so many kids have died. Yeah, so it's a great thing. Okay. <laughs> 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 
Andrew, do you want to have a cuddle? Have a look or a cuddle? <laughs> <laughs> Now you look uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Zero call in day. <laughs> That's slightly different from talking over the phone. About That's it. right. That's right. She looks pretty comfortable in you, though. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, she's going to sleep. How, how old are you, Andrew? Twenty-three. And how many years do you think? Twenty. Okay. So you haven't had to do anything like that. Before? I've, I've had calls with cardiac arrests, but this is the first call where I've given the instructions and the patient's actually made it. Right. So that was good. How long have you been working um, with police? Five years now. Five years, okay. Yeah. 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 I've just got to make a presentation, thank you. It's almost as big as she is. <laughs> 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 what are we doing? How are we doing? Look after the baby, they're yeah. a good job. So, uh, from the police. We're very happy with the outcome. We're very proud of Andrew. We're very proud of you because you performed a very good job yourself down at CPR at that change. And here's a little keepsake. Thank you. That's great. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> if you put the koala next to the baby, they're nearly the same size. <laughs> <laughs> Not much difference, is there? <laughs> See that? That's wicked. That's so cool. Thank you very much for that. Everyone happy if we give baby back to mum? <laughs> 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 <laughs>